All right, so finally we uh, managed to fit on one uh, panel. <laughs> so uh, thank you all for coming and welcome to today's session on youth and volunteering, uh, in which it will feature uh, a lot of amazing uh, organizations uh, sitting on the panel here to support young persons with disabilities uh, to lead an independent lifestyle participate in sports and social activities, uh, and volunteering opportunities. So let me first uh, introduce who I am. Uh, I am uh, Ramiz Meher. I'm one of the co-founders of HELM. It's an organization uh, that's based in Egypt. Uh, HELM, uh, HELM is an Arabic word that actually um, uh, translates to a dream. And this is the third year. I'm, uh, I'm glad to be here amongst uh, all, of, all of you. Uh, and we'll need to, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, Helm, uh, Helm's main mission is to promote the full uh, participation of persons with disabilities in all aspects of life. Uh, and we focus on breaking down physical and social barriers towards the inclusion of persons with disabilities uh, in Egypt. Uh, quickly, uh, I'll just tell you a bit about our model. This model we were awarded last year as one of the best practices in terms of accessibility and employment, uh, in which we developed a strategy to uh, help different companies to accommodate the needs of persons with disabilities through training programs, and we also empower people with disabilities through also volunteering and sports programs as well. And one of the main uh, uh, innovative factor of this uh, project was um, is that we, when it comes to supporting companies, we also uh, have persons with disabilities themselves as part of our team who volunteer to do different set of activities with the companies like uh, making people try being on a wheelchair, uh, trying the experience of going to narrow doors, uh, being blindfolded for a period of time, and all the facilitators and the trainers uh, from Helm are actually volunteer to change the perception of the companies and other institutions because we always think that persons with disabilities are the one that needs help and they need to be to volunteer to help them, but actually it's vice versa. People with disabilities would volunteer to change the mindset and the perception of companies and different institutions on how to accommodate uh, and how persons with disabilities have capabilities and abilities as well. So we'll go to the next slide. Um, and all the sessions, this is another just session called it's a disability quality training, which is also involves uh, changing mindsets. We've done this with more than like we trained more than 4,000 employees in different companies and institutions. Uh, we also help different companies to do an accessibility audit, and such audits are then uh, uh, put on a uh, yeah, the next slide as well. Uh, put on an app that's called Intalik, and the beauty of this app is it has all the places that are made accessible or have some accessibility features, and also volunteers with disabilities can also in anywhere, anytime, wherever they go, they could just uh, be asked a couple of questions to uh, uh, identify the different accessibility features in any location. Like, for example, how, if, if there's stairs or not, if there's a ramp, the slope of the ramp, and such questions will later on be added on the app to be uh, visible to just anyone uh, who could see them. Uh, those are some of the key partners that we've worked with. Um, and our team consists of mainly around 22 employees and 1,250 volunteers, of which most of them are actually uh, volunteers with disabilities. Uh, so just as we all stand here for like, the rights of people with disabilities, we always advocate, we call for the inclusion of persons with disabilities, we should always do the same with volunteering. Sometimes we underestimate uh, the power of volunteering sports and just for a person to become independent. Um, so I'd leave the floor uh, for the five amazing organizations, award-winning organizations this year, uh, and I'll just leave the floor, I'll start with uh, Liliana Perez, and I hope I say the name right, uh, Maiti Ortiz from United, uh, we are equal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Maite Cárdenas. It's our privilege to share with you all and relevant information in a beautiful, meaningful ways in which United We Are Equal, or Unidos Somos Iguales in Spanish, uh, promotes the social inclusion of persons with disabilities 
in so, into the society. It is also short that Unidos or United, it's a Mexican not-profit organization. What is more difficult to face? The disability itself or a society that rejects these disabilities? What do you think? A society. In Unidos, also, we believe that it's more difficult to face a hostile uh, society that is always ignores our people with disabilities. A society that uh, cares less of the difficulties of problems to the others. It will start back in 1987 that Unidos, our mission is transforming lives through the interaction between people with and without disabilities. We are really life changing in order to achieve a society more empathic, inclusive, and sensibility. Unidos also changed my life. The society and the families with individuals with disabilities assume insulation and discriminations. It is the normal reactions of people towards what people with disabilities. This project aims to assume an assistive positive impact of people with disabilities, their family, and the society as a whole. Uh, it is also aimed to change the, the negative roots of a negative consequence that are people like such as ignorance and wrong beliefs about a person with disability due to interactions between persons with and without disability. The most important goal is achieve inclusion and respect the human rights of persons with disabilities. Unidos get two populations together people with and without disabilities that do not usually interact with each other. It's, it is through social activities like uh, bowling, going to the movies, and among other activities. In addition, sensitization or awareness at workshops and training corporations and schools. In a magnitude, it's uh, both experience as a fun. We invite children, young, and people with disabilities through um, universities and, and uh, schools, and especially education schools, and various institutions in which additions to be uh, raising awareness. We invite them to participate in our activities. The sense of the model is that we always uh, must uh, be a person with disability side by side with a young people with children or a young people with, without disabilities. It is through this interaction that awareness is raised. And um, as a people realize that are the skills and virtues of people without, with disabilities at the same time. This achievement and transformation and becoming promotes an agents of social change in their environment. We focus on young people, as they will be an architects, will uh, design accessible space of people with disabilities, and doctors, and teachers, and lawyers that fly to the human rights of people with disabilities. And in summary, we form leaders for the inclusive society. Through so our model, we are able to improve uh, the quality of life of people with disabilities, making by themselves more independent, raising their self-esteem and self-confidence, feeling included, accept, and above all, making friends like you and me. Now, I'm going to introduce Liliana Perescano, who is going to talk about the impact of our model. Thank you, Maite. Thank you, Maite. Well, through 32 years, UNIDOS have managed to raise awareness of the number of people, as you can see. Uh, this is multiplied with the impact that young people have participated in UNIDOS as volunteers, undertake social new projects. For example, uh, Alejandra Garcia was a volunteer at UNIDOS for five years, 
And she started when she was 16 years old. She has set, she has set up an enterprise that is dedicated to training and including people with disability in companies. She also promotes the labor rights of the people with disability at the United Nations. In Mexico, most of the places are not accessible for people with disability. After UNIDOS carried out its activities, awareness is raised and facilities are made accessible for UNIDOS and for other people. Approximately 80% of the people who participate uh, with disability, who participate in UNIDOS, would not have social activities with friends. Based on our research, five out of every 10 young people who participate in UNIDOS are dedicated to advocating activities for people with disabilities. The next, please. Thank you. Well, this is Leo, uh, who is 30, 31 years old. He was born with spina bifida. He got in Unidos when he was eight years old. He was an introverted child, and thanks to Unidos, he became extroverted and have many friends. Leo currently distributes artisanal coffee, and thanks to Unidos, he just opened his own coffee shop. And here is Letty. She's 29 years old. She was born with cerebral palsy and has been 10 years with Unidos. Unidos has given her the opportunity to grow in a social sphere and also in a labor field. Letty currently is a lecturer of facilitator of awareness workshop for company as offered by Unidos. And she has a radio program. She's an artist and now, Leo and Letty, they uh, met at Unidos, and now they are getting married in October. We have documented all the process through manuals, which allows us for choosing the idea way to replicate it. The, we can replicate the whole model or only certain programs. In order to replicate it in other cities or, in, or country, we have an online courses to potential replicators as well as the national structure that support it. Unidos now is replicated in six cities in Mexico and 11 in Chile, and we are ready to expand further. The way in the, which the program is replicated could be by a franchise or with an ally. As a strategy to fundraise, we also facilitate awareness, workshop, and corporate volunteer with the goal of create awareness to hire people with disability. If you are someone who works with people with disability, or if you are an organization who wants to work with people, young people to enable Jane of change, a disability advocates, we invite you to join forces with us. Also, if you are a consultant firm to enhance our organization capacity uh, or an organization that wants us to replicate our model, we invite you to transform more life like we did with Leo, Leti, and Alejandra. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you uh, so much, Lilian and uh, Maiti. Uh, I love the idea of uh, replicating, since you already uh, replicated your model in six cities and also in Chile. So, and this is the whole idea of uh, practices in the Zero Project. This is one of the main aspects of uh, actually being awarded is to be able to replicate your model. So, uh, I'm personally interested. So, uh, okay, so. Um, uh, next speaker is uh, Sara Minkara, and she's from Empowering Through Integration Organization. Um, and she'll tell us more about uh, her practice uh, in the next uh, 10 minutes. Okay, cool.
Awesome, thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing this morning? Thank you. Woo, awesome. Um, my name is Slada Minkara, and I'm the founder and CEO of Empowerment Through Integration. I want to quickly also introduce my colleague on my right, Heather Fuentes. Um, she will be supporting me through this presentation. So, <clears throat> I'm going to start. I am blind, and I'm very proud of it. I lived a very, very much full life, being able to go to the mainstream schooling, college, where I studied math, grad school, and I was even able to hike and slide down a volcano in Nicaragua. Yeah. <laughs> and that's because I was so fortunate and so privileged to have grown up in a supportive and empowering home and environment and community where my mother never allowed me to say the words, I can't do this because I cannot see. She and my, my, my family and my teachers pushed me and my sister, who's actually visually impaired as well, to tap into our full potential. We were valued. We were seen as humans with potential. But let me tell you the other side of the story. Growing up, we used to go to Lebanon during the summers because that's where my family is originally from. And that's where I was exposed to a different narrative. The narrative that's, that most kids with disabilities are experiencing across the world. Where we're pitied and seen as a charity, shame, burden, there's something wrong with you. And I used to hate experiencing that narrative. And I used to think to myself, if I live in that kind of environment growing up, I wouldn't be standing in front of you right now. Actually, I'm sitting. I wouldn't be sitting in front of you right now. And unfortunately, most kids are experiencing that, whether it's in Lebanon, across the world, or even in the US. I remember meeting this kid, Omar, one time. I entered his home. He was 12 years old at the time. He was still in his diapers, actually. Never been to school. Mother abandoned him when he was a kid because he was born blind. And that story is not the exception, but it's a very common story across the world. And that's why I founded Empowerment Through Integration, which is focused on tackling, disrupting, and changing the narrative, moving from a charity-based perspective to a value-based perspective. This narrative is projected first put forward by the society, right? then embodied by the communities, then by the families, then by the youth individuals with disabilities, and it becomes a vicious cycle. When you're only living in a narrative that's disempowering, you start believing that. And I remember when I used to go to Lebanon, I start sometimes being ashamed of who I am and start wanting to hide my blindness. And that's why ETI is focused on bringing forward a value narrative, not just human rights, which is actually what's common and what is the common approach right now. It's not that we have to include people with disabilities, it's we want to. There is value. We're losing out when we don't. Now, how do we do that? Very complicated problem, but we have a simple solution. Well, actually not really simple, but anyways. Um, we've designed, we've created human-centric design programs that really changed the narrative on a very individual human level. Let me take you through this experience. We first empower people to recognize their bias surrounding disability and how that has allowed them to impose limitations on themselves and others. Because we're all part of creating this narrative, whether we like it or not. So, we're first getting them to recognize that. Then we empower them to notice gaps of systemic exclusion using adaptive framework and not technical. We don't look at space and say, okay, there's exclusion gaps right here and just look at it at a very surface level. No, we get them to, to dig deeper and see what's actually causing this and let's understand it. And how do I fit in this system? And, be part, and how am I part of this? Then we take them to the next step and we empower them to come up with innovative, 
creative, low-cost, tailored solutions of inclusion. We give them a combination of existing best practices because there's amazing best practices out there, plus design thinking innovation tools. Because we want them to feel like they are able to come up with their own tailored solutions that works for them. Finally, we get them to believe that the power is in each of our hands. We can all make a difference in changing this narrative. So we've created programs that really work with everyone across the system. We have programs for youth with disabilities. We have programs for the families. We have programs for the community at large. And we have programs that really tackle different aspects within society. I'm not gonna go through the, all the range of programs because we have like eight programs. Um, ranging from life skills to family workshops to inclusive summer camps to inclusive community service projects, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But all of our programs use this human-centric design approach. But I'm actually, I'm actually gonna tell you a little bit more about one specific program that we do. And it's a very powerful program that we bring forward to society at large. Seven minutes, right? Two minutes, okay. Actually, okay. So, um, it, it, it stems from this experience of, if when we meet for people for the first time, we label them, right? And we judge them and we create assumptions. But if you're meeting a person for the first time without seeing them, what happens? Most of these labels cannot be created, which means most of these assumptions cannot be formed. You're able to meet a person through more of a pure, authentic lens. Because for me, when I meet someone, I cannot make most of their, most of their labels, so I'm coming, coming at it from a very pure level. And I'm forced to listen to who they are. So we take that point of flipping the narrative on blindness and say blindness allows us to untap authenticity and potential. And we bring forward this experience actually to corporations, government entities, et cetera, for participants to really think about how can they create a more authentic um, and uh, authentic and inclusive space. Um, we can talk more later about this because I only have, I think, a minute left. So come talk to me after this specific program if you're interested in learning more. But we're hoping to take this narrative change forward. Every single one of us needs to be part of creating this narrative, right? Doctors, CEOs, um, uh, see, uh, educators, everyone, engineers, everyone needs to be part of creating that change, narrative change, right? So we're now actually in the process of creating an inclusive human-centric design training. So we're taking our approach and we're scaling it forward. So instead of us scaling our program, we're scaling our approach. And we're gonna be doing it in two ways. Through executive education programs for executive across different leaders, and for in-house customized trainings for specific clients. Where leaders are always are encouraged to understand their bias and then the limitations, are encouraged to think about gaps of exclusion surrounding their policies, processes, programs, and products, and come up with their own tailored creative solutions of inclusion. I know every single one of us in this room are, are, are part of advancing inclusion in their own spaces. So if you're interested in learning more and wanting to partner up, please speak to me or Heather afterwards. We will have one pagers, et cetera. And thank you so much for listening to us and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the conference. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, this was very inspiring. Um, and I have to agree, like, persons with disabilities being seen as charity or burden to society, I think um, this is a global issue. Like, I think every country is facing this, um, uh, this issue. And, and, uh, and your approach of having a holistic approach in terms of customizing solutions that focus on uh, the family, the youth, the community as a whole, uh, is, a, is a great practice to, uh, to replicate and work on. So uh, thank you for sharing, and for sure not including persons with disabilities uh, is losing a lot. Uh, uh, inclusion always is, uh, 
uh, is the best approach to, uh, to, uh, to make use of. Like in Egypt, we have like around 15% of the population. Imagine not having such population uh, effective uh, in all aspects of life. So uh, thank you again, uh, Sarah. So now, uh, uh, Dr. Heinz Tippel, he's the founder of the Basic Initiative for Sports Inclusion, uh, would be talking next. He'll give us uh, a brief about uh, his practice, which uh, aims to include young people with uh, intellectual uh, disabilities, uh, to give them an opportunity to practice uh, sports. So he developed a great project uh, to promote the uh, inclusive sports in schools. So let's uh, hear it from him, actually. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much for the invitation and thank you for the opportunity to present our project promoting inclusive sports in schools and also in clubs. Um, the basic initiative of sports and inclusion, <clears throat> an Austrian NGO or more a small NGO started inclusion sports in 2004 to provide young people with intellectual disabilities the opportunity to participate in sports and in sports events. BC works together with interested schools to bring together pupils both with and without disabilities for joint training and competition to organize inclusive sports events and to conduct teachers training and seminars. Uh, BC consists of a staff of four persons and uh, about 40 volunteers and is the project leading club of sports and inclusion. Under the motto Sports for All and With All, the promotion and dissemination of inclusion sports in Austria has been in progress for more than 15 years. The trigger of this uh, project was the lack of resources of inclusive sports events and the frequent non-participation of students with ID in PE lessons and thus also in sports events. They were included from, excluded from sports, sports lessons and also sports competition. The aim of this, of this project is to promote and disseminate inclusive sports in schools and to implement inclusive sports in schools on a PE last level, as well on a competitive level, and not only in schools, uh, and also in uh, the curriculum of universities and the teachers' education. <clears throat> the innovative aspects of this project are we uh, conduct, of s conduct seminars, workshops, and presentation about inclusive sports in schools and universities. We build up uh, unified sports teams in schools and organize uh, competitions in, different, in, in various sports disciplines. Uh, understanding and for and reducing prejudice against people with disabilities was another aspect and promoting social inclusion of people with disabilities and improving their fitness through sports was also a um, main focus. And motivating students with disabilities for lifelong sports, sports is a general uh, target in this program. Other in innovative aspects are inclusive sports brings together students with and without uh, disabilities for joint training and competition in various sports like basketball, floorball, and uh, football, and also in individual sports like swimming and track and field, and so on. Inclusive sports offers young people with disabilities uh, a public stage to show their performance in sports, to win medals, to gain self-confidence, and to intensify social contacts, and therefore facilitate inclusion in our society. And the project has also uh, <clears throat> positive and unexpected uh, effects of developing in different, on different levels. 
since 2016, inclusive sports competition have been included in the school sports calendar in Styria and also in uh, other federal states. A sports official of inclusive sports has, been, has also been appointed by the school authorities. Since 2003, 15,000 students with and without disabilities have been taking part in this project with their teachers. In seminars, workshops, and presentations about sports and inclusion are conducted in schools, universities, and also in clubs. <clears throat> Uh, BC was also awarded for inclusion in sports by Lebenshilfe uh, Austria 2016. It sounds good, but unfortunately it wasn't profitable. Here you can see the increasing number of inclusive sports events in Austria, especially in Styria, Carinthia, Burgenland, and sometimes in Lower Austria. This uh, event, uh, organized by BZ, the Basic Initiative of Sports and Inclusion, together with schools. Uh, this project has also an evaluation uh, program. A four-year study published 2014 showed that the project improves the health and fitness of school children with ID builds self-esteem and promotes social contacts in inclusive sports classes. The social capital was higher as, uh, than in other classes. We could see an increase in the academic performance of intellectually impaired youth, resulting in better grades and marks. In addition, in schools, inclusive sports activities have an eye-opening effect on teachers, parents, and classmates. Students with ID can show their skills in sports and are also involved in unified teams. Teams, both with and without uh, people, young people with and without disabilities. Uh, the, financing of the financial uh, program is, uh, we started in, with a low budget, uh, about 1,000 euros per year in 2003. And BZ in Special Olympics Austria has been, in the pri has been the primary funder of inclusion sports, providing 5,000 a year since uh, 2011. And this support will continue for an undetermined time. A total of 20,000 euros uh, a year for five years is needed to roll out the project nationally, and these funds will be sought from school administrations and the, the Austrian government. But the last years, we weren't successful. The challenges, too few volunteers and sponsors, and uh, another challenge is the variation in support in different federal states. Uh, the project started in 2004. We could see an increasing number of sports events and participants. <clears throat> and uh, what are the next steps in our project? Uh, we'll organize and support an inclusive sports week in May 2019 with more than 20 regional, national, and international inclusive sports events and unified competitions in Styria, Carinthia, with support of media. Conducting furthermore seminars and workshops at universities at school, and uh, which was the key to the program's dissemination. Producing and publishing teaching materials and good examples of inclusion sports for teachers and trainers. It depends on the budget. And uh, apply for an international project like Erasmus with European schools will be uh, in next month. And the uh, long-term uh, activity will be building up contact to schools in Ghana and Kazakhstan. Yeah, uh, thank you for your attention and speak about that.
Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Hind. I think um, we, we all should know the importance of uh, inclusive sports and how uh, persons with disabilities would be, would be impacted in terms of the psychological benefits, in terms of the good self-esteem, confidence, and belief in their skills and abilities. So uh, your model would definitely have a great impact when replicated even further to other countries as well. So uh, now let's listen to uh, our next speakers. So it's uh, uh, Yefet Klein and Mimi Palacci. Uh, I think the names weren't correct because they're laughing at <laughs> <No. laughs> Okay, so it's a, it's a joint program uh, called Volunteering for Change. Uh, and it aims to provide a framework for high school students with disabilities to, uh, to engage uh, in a meaningful life. So I'll leave the floor to... Uh, we need a yeah. clicker. And I'll pass the clicker. We are pleased to, pre to present today Volunteering for Change, a program that we developed in Israel in partnership of JDC, the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Labor, Social Affairs and Social Services that are not here with us, and Elvin Israel, David, <laughs> an NGO, the CEO of which David Marco is here with us. Volunteering for Change is our way of making accessible the social involvement of youth with disabilities in high school. This official program for social involvement requires that every student in Israel complete 60 hours of social involvement in order to graduate high school. In order for students with disabilities to participate in this program, the Ministry of Education published a white paper on the social involvement of youth with disabilities. With this adoption of this document, the policy was ready and vol Volunteering for a Change was established to develop the practice that will implement the policy. So as we started the program, we checked and wanted to see what is already being done in schools. And we have learned that many of the, of the schools created group volunteering without asking the youth uh, what are they interested in. Also we found out that many of them, about 70% of them, were uh, volunteering with the elderly, because of course it's much more convenient. So volunteering for a change works to broaden the possibilities for youth with disabilities and allow them to participate in meaningful volunteering activities. This is achieved by developing a manual that we will shortly present, um, creating tools such as one example is a questionnaire and a, a pocket guide for working with the students in order to help them and us better understand what are their dreams and wishes are regarding volunteering, of course. And of course, there, this is just one example of the tools that we've developed. Also, we developed a database of meaningful volunteering opportunities by publishing uh, requests for proposals uh, of volunteering roles and supporting some of them professionally and financially. We also train uh, uh, professionals by raising awareness that young persons, as Ramin said at the beginning, with disabilities can not only receive help but also help others. And one of the special tools that we have for raising awareness is a special VR, virtual reality app, that we developed and we're using it, we, we're, uh, using, it using these uh, Google Cardboard uh, glasses. Uh, that allows people without disabilities to see a daily situation through the eyes of youth with disabilities. Um, and also to make them better understand how they can help and make things more accessible without very expensive or professional help. The most updated version of this app can only be downloaded in Hebrew and Arabic, but we also have an early version in English, and you are more than welcome to come after the session and try one of them out. Back to the manual, as you can see. It addresses all aspects of volunteering, whether uh, working or volunteering as a part of a group, volunteering independently, or together with youth without disabilities. Uh, and the concept is based on the circle of volunteering and provides the knowledge and tools for making adjustments and making sure that the meaningful uh, volunteering experience is undertaken. Here you can see the table of contents. 
of the manual. Uh, as stated, it is based on the circle of volunteering, starting with the preparations prior to the volunteering, uh, as well as all the things that needs to be done while volunteering, and preparing the volunteers uh, to the conclusion of their experience of volunteering. For each of these stages, we propose practical exercises, as, and as you can see, we also address the uh, measures for success, the benefits for the society, for the organization in which the volunteer is, taken, uh, uh, is placed in, and for the students, him or herself. Uh, and now let's take a, look at the, on the key, take a look at the key principles. So here we present the 10 principles that makes a volunteer experience meaningful volunteering. As you can see, we address the personal uh, uh, process that the volunteer undergoes, choosing the type of role and how they can advocate for themselves with regard to the role that they feel and the way that they are included in the volunteering place and organization. All tools are displayed in the Ministry of Education website and will be displayed soon uh, in the new website of the Israeli Volunteering Council. On the left, you can see on the home page the area that refers to the information on the program and also three other areas, changing attitudes, database of volunteer positions, and ideas and tools for motivation and implementation. On the right, you can see the database of roles by areas uh, such as environment, sports, technologies, children, etc. And at the bottom, you can see an example of suggestion for volunteer role. Uh, or position. Uh, we have uh, the area of activities, a short explanation on the position itself, the skills needed, characteristic of the position, for instance, is it done outdoors or indoors, uh, other specifications, for example, what training is needed, what special opportunities can be uh, provided, and information about the experience gained. Uh, has it been tried yet or just planned? And of course, contact details uh, to get some more uh, information. The impact of this program can already be seen at the personal and organizational level. Youth who have contributed to society through volunteering can grow up to be leaders, participating in all areas of life and claiming their rightful place in society. We can already tell you that we have had many students with disabilities joining the Youth Council and have had influence on many areas of life, as well as on the attitudes of those who now see them differently. Now let's take a look at the numbers. We have 200 high school students volunteering in meaningful positions by personal choice. We have 500 professionals that were trained, and soon we shall provide these knowledge and tools to all schools in Israel. This young woman is named Or, light in Hebrew, uh, and she was the national service volunteer for the program in its first year. She has cerebral palsy and vision impairment, as well as a special gift for making people listen to her and fall in love with her. In the first conference we had, all students stage and addressed the professionals in the audience. She shared her personal experience on the people and places that had excluded her and those that had, that had, had included her, and this is how she put it. A few years ago, I began attending Youth Center and went from being a client to contributor and volunteered there. The position was, was very meaningful to me, and I was happy to find out that I was meaningful to the youth and to the staff. One of the youth told me once, you are so strong and doing so well, you do everything, sometimes better than others. I don't see how your disability limits you. And then I knew that I met her. I ask you to matter for these young people, to make them matter. Starting tomorrow, choose one, choose someone that feels not good enough, not belonging enough, underappreciated. Talk to them, believe in their abilities, believe in them, and help them go from clients to contributors, to be involved, to influence, to volunteer. She earned it. <laughs> The four-year pilot program cost about 600,000 US dollars, about $150,000 per year funded by the program's partners, but the ongoing funding will depend on publicly available resources such as local government's funding for youth activities, existing training programs for educators, etc. 
Now that we have the knowledge and the tools, we need to scale them up to the rest of the country until we reach each and every relevant student and teacher. We also want all volunteers coordinator to know that youth with disability can be a contributing part of the volunteer force. As you can understand, we have developed many tools and our goal is to make sure that everyone that can benefit from them will know about them and know how to use them. Thank you and success to all of us. Uh, thank you, thank you so much, Yefet and uh, Mimi, for the uh, for presenting your uh, project. So, uh, uh, last but not least, okay, for the past I think 24 hours, I've been practicing to say the name of the of the project in German. So I hope I get it right. So, Welt was Wiese. That's completely wrong, I think. Uh, well, it's almost correct. It's Weltwegweiser. So it's a service platform for uh, young people interested in uh, volunteering. So uh, uh, I'll leave uh, Christopher and Erwin to uh, uh, introduce their project. And also, Erwin, if you can also share with us, uh, as a previous volunteer, your experience uh, as well. That would be great for the audience as well. So I'll leave the floor for you guys. <coughs> Okay. Um, no, uh, the question is just about the remote. It doesn't work. Okay. So thank you very much. Um, for us, it means a uh, great honor to be here in this panel, and um, I'm honored to um, to give you now a short introduction on our work about making international volunteer programs more inclusive. Weltwegweiser is a service platform for young people interested in volunteering abroad and also a cooperation network of currently 20 Austrian vol <laughs> voluntary service organizations. They are a little bit too fast for me. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, 20, 20 Austrian voluntary service organizations that aim to provide sustainable and responsible volunteer opportunities in the area of social affairs, development cooperation and human rights. We understand international volunteering as an act of solidarity between people in the global north and global south countries. Weltwegweiser is uh, founded by Jugend eine Welt, an Austrian NGO specialized in development cooperation and it's financed by the Austrian Development Agency, the Austrian Ministry of Social Affairs, and by own funds of Jugend eine Welt. Um, these are donations. Our commitment for inclusion is still very young. We started in 2017 with our pilot project, which um, will be finished by the end of this year. We are working in close cooperation with Austrian deployment organization and organizations for people with disabilities. And we would never have succeed if we walked alone. So I'd like to mention and also to thank our friends and important cooperation partners, our colleagues from Grenzenlos, um, uh, Intercultural Youth Exchange, BZEPS, um, the Center of Self-Determined Life, and Internationale Freiwilligen Einsätze, who work very close with Caritas projects worldwide. So, what was the problem? Most of the Austrian deployment organizations, those who sent volunteers and projects abroad, they didn't offer inclusive opportunities at all. As a consequence of lack of, their ex of, lack of experience, of lack of professional and financial resources. And furthermore, persons with disabilities were struggling with restrictive administrative barriers and with organizational difficulties, making it even more complicated to organize an international voluntary service. And we also see there is, a, in the field of international 
um, cooperation and negative perception of people with disabilities. So mainly um, um, there was a one-way perception where people with disabilities were mostly recognized as passive recipients of aid and auxiliary measures. Our plan was to change that here in Austria. So with the support of our partners, we started to create a framework for inclusive international volunteer assignments and to support and encourage Austrian deployment organizations to make their services more, ac more accessible and inclusive. So our actions um, taken were about how to address the target groups, how to speak about needs and conditions of inclusion and disabilities, how to find suitable volunteer assignments, and how to prepare for the stay abroad, how to give support during the volunteer assignment, both for the volunteer himself and for the, um, for the sending organization. And finally, of course, how to finance the costs for additional requirements. Furthermore, Weltweg Weiser realizes activities to raise awareness and to promote <coughs> inclusive volunteer services. Former volunteers serve as ambassadors of independence and self-determination with the ability to support others. And this is very important to us. On the one hand, to encourage people uh, with all kinds of disabilities or chronic diseases to realize an inclusive volunteer service in the country abroad, and on the other hand, to prove that it is possible to do a great job as a volunteer, irrespective of your disabilities. On the national level in Austria, step-by-step -step more deployment organizations have applied own inclusive volunteer programs. By now, there are nine organizations who offer um, more than 50 different volunteer options for people with or without um, disabilities in social projects in many countries in the global south. So people with, with all kinds of disabilities can go abroad to participate in international volunteer services. And their tasks include teaching, working with the elderly, administration, peer-to-peer -peer training, and building websites, among others. Our objective is to set a new standard for the development of suitable, high-quality international voluntary programs where accessibility and equality are a key component. So I pass to my colleague, Erwin, who is a former volunteer. Um, our project claims to contribute to empower people with disabilities and give them direct possibilities of social participation. Uh, this is uh, important for the society and for the rights of people with disabilities in general. Uh, it also uh, offers a very concrete and wonderful experience uh, for, uh, for the volunteers and the people they're working with. To make this a little bit more practical, I'd like to tell you my own story. My name is Erwin Buchberger. I've been using a wheelchair since I was born. Inclusion has always been very important for me and my parents. Uh, so I was always included. Uh, in school um, and in my spare time, I um, had a lot of great adventures with the Boy Scouts. Today, I live uh, a self-determined life uh, with uh, personal assistance. Years ago, I wanted to participate in a voluntary service with the Austrian organization Grenzenlos. The day I heard about the possibility to participate in a voluntary service, I immediately got excited about it. Um, the ideal project for me was found in an, uh, in an integrative school in Latvia where some pupils were disabled. Um, uh, in the first week of my voluntary service, uh, I got to know the smaller kids. They were very young and couldn't speak English at all. When I tried to talk to them, they didn't understand me, but smiled at me and asked me to come with them. So I learned... Uh, uh, how to communicate uh, without words and from heart to heart. Um, I was only two months in Latvia, but I've learned a lot. How to be independent, how to cope with an unfamiliar everyday life. Um, I got to know many new people uh, and tried to and learn to see the world with different eyes. I was there to exchange experience and to support others. This was, a great, uh, this was great not only for my own uh, self-confidence, uh, but also for the local 
children with, with disabilities. I believe that uh, uh, I believe that voluntary services can be a great experience for people with disabilities uh, because um, it can change the perception um, of the society regarding people like me. And even more, yeah. um, so with well the people with all kinds of disability can go abroad to make a voluntary service. Our pilot project will be finished by the end of this year. To encourage further growth, we plan to publish a detailed report on the project, project including the didactic materials it has already created. And of course, we want to move on. Volunteers are unpaid. They donate their time, their knowledge, and hard work to contribute to a better world and help the poor. We believe that the social achievements of voluntary services, of inclusive voluntary services, are worth much more than the necessary funds to make it possible. Thanks for your attention. Okay, thank you uh, so much, Christopher and everyone. Thank you, Aaron, for sharing uh, your personal story as a volunteer as well. I think this was uh, uh, very helpful. Uh, so we'll leave the rest of the time, which is five minutes, <laughs> for uh, questions. So if you have a question, can you just uh, use your mic and just introduce yourself and just uh, direct your question to a certain speaker or for all of the speakers. Zara, Zara Todd, Project Scotland. I have two questions, one for two, one speaker and one for another. For the speakers, and I apologise, my German's not good enough to pronounce your organisation's name. Will your report be available in English? Um, and um, for Sarah, I was wondering um, what you thought was a key thing that's enabled you to be such a passionate advocate as a disabled person it is incredibly inspiring or I hate the word inspiring but great to see somebody that is so passionate and able to speak so passionately about your identity and I'm wondering what helped you get there um do I just speak yes <laughs> I'll just bring the mic closer to you okay thank you Okay, beautiful, awesome. Um, thank you so much for your question. Um, so I would say my passion, my drive, my confidence um, stems from, it starts off actually from my mom, um, who, who created this very much strong and empowering narrative, my family, um, who really allowed me to see my blindness as a strength. Yes, there's technical difficulties, technical obstacles when it comes to my blindness. But to be honest, every single one of us also have, you know, technical challenges. Um, and yes, life was not easy. There was, I had to really break down these technical obstacles all the time. But when she, when she really encouraged me to see my blindness as a strength, because my blindness has given me resilience, perseverance, creativity, um, because we have to always be creative as people with disabilities. Um, and it's given me a purpose. And I think, and we were actually talking about this last night, is if I, if I wasn't born, if I, hadn't, if I didn't have my, my disability, I wouldn't have achieved what I've achieved so far. I probably would have lived a very much mediocre life and done the, the quote unquote average thing in that people, you know, it gave me a purpose. And um, I think that when you, one thing that I always say people to ask me, what's the one advice I, I give to others, in general people? I say you need to really reflect and understand, love yourself. List down all of the identities that you hold. I'm a woman, I'm a Muslim, I'm blind, I'm whatever. And all of these identities reflect on, do you see them in a negative way? Or do you think society sees them in a negative way? Or do you see them in a positive way? And for those that are seen in a negative way, let's start reflecting and seeing them in a positive way. 
So for me, I've come to a point and say, I was born and I have what I have for a reason. I love myself, I love what I have, and let me make it as a value for society. So it goes back to my mom and how the narrative that she, she gave me. I hope that answers your question. And your second question is to... I've already asked it. It's whether the um, resources that are being created by the Austrian volunteering organization, whose German I can't pronounce, are going to be published in English. Oh, uh, okay. I can help you pronounce it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, no, she's, she's, can, can, you, can you, I'm sorry, can you repeat your question one last time? <laughs> so, are the resources from your pilot project that you talked about at the end of your presentation, are they going to be published in English? Oh. Yeah. Um, well, in this year, our, um, our final report will be published in German. But we plan to um, to go further and um, to to move our project on a European level, and that would mean that in the next year we would be able to as well publish some um, some of our methodologies and um, information in English, so to share it with you. Okay, so I think we're uh, just on time. Uh, it might be the end of the session, but you still can ask any of the speakers after the. Uh, after the session, you can ask them whatever you want. I would personally recommend to connect with all the speakers, all their great uh, innovative uh, projects. And thank you so much for attending. And if you can just uh, help me applaud the panelists for one last time, please.